When you take your first bite of rice, whether it's fluffy white rice, nutty brown rice, fragrant jasmine, or sticky sushi rice, your body is already preparing for a chain of events that will transform those soft grains into the fuel your cells run on. Rice is primarily made of starch, a complex carbohydrate composed of long, tightly linked chains of glucose molecules. In your mouth, something fascinating happens almost instantly. Your saliva, which might feel like nothing more than moisture, actually contains powerful enzymes, specifically salivary amylase, that start breaking apart those chains into simpler sugars like maltose. Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about diacylon, a powerful blend of 13 natural ingredients, each carefully selected for their proven ability to support healthy blood sugar levels, enhance insulin sensitivity, and promote overall wellness. You can read more on diacelon.com. If you've ever held rice in your mouth for a while, you may notice it's starting to taste sweeter. That's the starch literally turning into sugar before you've even swallowed. This first stage of digestion is brief but crucial because it means your blood sugar journey begins in your mouth. Even before the rice reaches your stomach, the gears of your digestive system are turning, priming your body for the energy surge that's about to follow. Once you swallow the rice, it travels down the esophagus and lands in the stomach, where digestion continues under very different conditions. The stomach is an acidic environment with strong muscular walls that churn and mash the rice into a soft, semi-liquid mixture called chyme. While carbohydrates like rice starch aren't broken down much by stomach acid itself, this churning serves a vital purpose. It breaks apart the food physically, increasing the surface area so that enzymes can later act on it more effectively. After spending about 10 to 15 minutes in the stomach, small portions of chyme are released into the small intestine. Here, the pancreas jumps into action, releasing a new wave of enzymes, including pancreatic amylase, which finish breaking down starch into pure glucose. It's like dismantling a Lego tower brick by brick until all you have left are individual glucose blocks ready to be absorbed. By the time the rice leaves the upper small intestine, it's no longer recognizable as rice. It has been transformed into the exact form of sugar your cells need to run. About 15 to 20 minutes after your first bite, these glucose molecules start rushing into your bloodstream. The walls of your small intestine are lined with millions of microscopic, finger-like projections called villi, and each villus is covered with even smaller microvilli, forming what's called the brush border. This massive surface area acts like a super-efficient sponge, soaking up glucose and sending it into your blood. At this point, the type of rice you ate really matters. White rice, with its outer bran layer removed, has a high glycemic index and is absorbed very quickly, meaning your blood sugar can climb steeply. Brown rice, on the other hand, contains fiber that slows this absorption, so the rise in blood sugar is more gradual. This phase, right before the 30-minute mark, is where many people feel a surge in mental or physical energy because their cells are getting a rapid fuel delivery. By the time you hit the 30-minute mark after eating, your blood sugar level is likely at or near its peak for that meal. For some people, this can mean an increase of 30, 40, or even 60 milligrams per deciliter above fasting levels, depending on the portion, size, type of rice, and what else they ate with it. White rice eaten alone tends to produce a tall, sharp spike on a glucose graph, while the same amount eaten with beans, vegetables, or lean protein produces a smaller, slower curve. Your pancreas is now working hard, releasing insulin into your bloodstream to handle the sudden arrival of glucose. Insulin is like a fleet of tiny keys, unlocking the doors to your cells so glucose can move inside and either be burned immediately for energy or stored for later use. Without this step, glucose would just float in your blood, unable to nourish your cells, which is exactly what happens in uncontrolled diabetes. Insulin's job at this stage is nothing short of life-saving. As glucose floods your bloodstream, insulin signals your muscle cells to absorb it for immediate energy needs, especially if you're moving or physically active. Your liver also acts like a storage tank, pulling in glucose and converting it into glycogen, a quick access energy reserve your body can tap into later. If there's more glucose than your body can store as glycogen, it will convert the excess into fat for long-term energy storage. This might sound like a bad thing, but it's an evolutionary advantage. 
Humans evolved to store surplus calories during times of plenty so we could survive times of scarcity. The goal of insulin's work here is to quickly bring blood sugar levels back down toward baseline, preventing prolonged high blood sugar, which can be harmful to your blood vessels, nerves, and organs if it happens repeatedly. For people with insulin resistance or diabetes, however, this step becomes far more challenging. In insulin resistance, your cells don't respond properly to insulin's knock at the door, so glucose lingers in your blood for much longer. In type 2 diabetes, this resistance is often combined with reduced insulin production, making the post-meal sugar spike even higher and longer lasting. In type 1 diabetes, the body produces little to no insulin at all, meaning that without injected or pumped insulin, glucose cannot efficiently enter the cells at all. This is why eating rice, especially white rice, can cause dramatic and prolonged blood sugar elevations in these individuals. Over time, repeated spikes after meals can contribute to serious complications such as damage to the eyes, kidneys, heart, and nervous system, which is why people with blood sugar regulation issues are often advised to limit or carefully pair rice with other foods. The way you combine rice with other foods can completely change your body's reaction to it. If you pair rice with high-fiber vegetables, protein-rich foods like chicken or tofu, or healthy fats like nuts and avocado, you slow down the digestive process considerably. Fiber physically traps some of the starch, making it harder for enzymes to access, while protein and fat delay stomach emptying, spreading glucose absorption over a longer period of time. This means your blood sugar won't shoot up as sharply within the first 30 minutes, and instead will rise more gently, giving your pancreas more time to release insulin and manage it effectively. This is why a balanced meal of rice with vegetables and protein, like a stir fry, has a very different effect than eating a large plate of plain white rice on its own. Even the way you prepare and store rice can influence your 30 minute blood sugar peak. When rice is cooked and then cooled in the refrigerator, some of its starch undergoes a transformation into resistant starch. Resistant starch behaves more like fiber. It bypasses digestion in the small intestine and is instead fermented by bacteria in the large intestine. This not only reduces the amount of glucose entering your bloodstream right away, but also benefits gut health by feeding beneficial bacteria. Reheating this cooled rice doesn't remove the resistant starch, meaning you can use this method to slightly reduce the glycemic impact of your rice dishes. It's a simple trick that can make a measurable difference especially for people who want to enjoy rice but avoid sharp blood sugar spikes. Your physical activity after eating is another powerful tool for controlling the size of your 30-minute spike. If you go for a 10 to 15-minute walk, do some light chores, or even just stand and move around after your meal, your muscles start pulling glucose from your bloodstream to use as fuel. This lowers your blood sugar more quickly and reduces the strain on your pancreas to release large amounts of insulin all at once. In contrast, if you sit completely still, watching TV or working at a desk, glucose stays in your bloodstream longer, and the post-meal spike will be higher and more prolonged. This is why cultures where walking after meals is common often see better blood sugar control, even among people who eat high-carbohydrate diets. By the end of the first half hour after eating rice, you're in the postprandial phase, the period when blood sugar is at or near its maximum for that meal. For a healthy person, the peak usually happens somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes and then gradually declines over the next hour or two as insulin does its job. If you were to track your blood sugar with a continuous glucose monitor, you would likely see a steep slope upward for plain white rice, a gentler slope for brown rice, and an even smaller rise if you paired it with fiber, protein, or healthy fats. This visual feedback is eye-opening for many people, helping them realize that small changes in meal composition can lead to big changes in how their body handles carbohydrates. For those who track their glucose, seeing a large spike after a rice-heavy meal can be surprising, especially if they thought of rice as a neutral food. While rice is indeed a staple food for billions of people worldwide, its effect on blood sugar is undeniable, particularly when eaten in large amounts without balancing nutrients. The fact that rice carbohydrates are complex doesn't mean they digest slowly. In reality, white rice's starch is broken down almost as quickly as table sugar once it's in your digestive tract. 
This is why paying attention to portion sizes, preparation methods, and food pairings can make such a huge difference in how your body responds. Ultimately, how your body handles the 30-minute post-rise blood sugar peak comes down to metabolic health. In a healthy system, the rise is quick but controlled, and blood sugar returns to normal within two hours. In a system with insulin resistance, the rise is higher, the fall is slower, and the glucose stays elevated longer, putting more stress on the body over time. Understanding what happens in that first 30 minutes is like getting a snapshot of your metabolic resilience, and it can guide you toward better choices that protect your long-term health. In conclusion, 30 minutes after eating rice, your body is in the middle of an intricate, highly coordinated process that has been honed over millions of years of human evolution. What began as a simple plate of soft, steaming grains is now a cascade of biochemical events. Starch transformed into glucose, glucose absorbed into your bloodstream, insulin dispatched to escort that glucose into cells, and your body working quietly behind the scenes to keep everything in balance. For most healthy individuals, this process is so seamless and automatic that it goes unnoticed. You don't feel your pancreas working. You don't feel your muscle cells absorbing glucose. You simply feel nourished, energized, maybe even a little more alert. But beneath that sense of normalcy is a powerful truth. Every one of these steps affects your long-term health. If your blood sugar rises too quickly and too often, if insulin has to be released in high amounts repeatedly, if glucose lingers in your bloodstream longer than it should, the effects can build up over time, leading to insulin resistance, weight gain, inflammation, and eventually more serious metabolic disorders. That's why understanding what happens in that crucial 30-minute window after eating rice isn't just interesting science. It's a blueprint for better health decisions. And here's the good news. You have far more control over this process than you might think. The type of rice you choose, the way you prepare it, what you eat alongside it, and even how you move your body afterward all shape the curve of your blood sugar. Switching from white rice to brown or mixed grain rice, pairing it with fiber-rich vegetables and lean protein, cooking and cooling it to increase resistant starch, and taking a short walk after your meal. These are simple, everyday adjustments that can dramatically smooth out that 30-minute spike. None of them require giving up rice completely. They just require eating it more intelligently. For billions of people around the world, rice is not just food. It's culture, comfort, and connection. It's at the heart of family meals, celebrations, and traditions. And the goal here isn't to strip away that joy. Instead, it's to empower you with the knowledge to keep rice in your life without letting it harm your health. When you understand the story of what happens in your body after each bite, you can make choices that let you enjoy that warm bowl of rice today while protecting your health for years to come. So the next time you sit down to a plate of rice, remember, you're not just eating. You're triggering one of the most sophisticated systems in the human body. You're starting a chain reaction that can either serve you well or push your health in the wrong direction. And by knowing what's happening in that first half hour after your meal, you're no longer eating blindly. You're eating with awareness, with intention, and with the power to keep your body working at its very best.